In section 1.3, we looked at simple random sampling, how to draw a sample that is just as likely as every other sample of that same size from the population. Now we want to look at some other sampling methods. And to be honest, this is just the beginning of sampling. These often work in conjunction with each other. Simple random sampling is like a basic building block, and so are these other ones. And then they would combine together to make more elaborate samples. I mean, the goal is to create a sample in a, in a cost-effective way, cost in terms of both time and money, that um, is a good representation of the population, that is drawn in a way that is efficient, etc. All right, so a stratified sample is the first one we're going to look at. A stratified sample is the is when the population is separated into non-overlapping groups called strata. Uh, then a simple random sample is obtained from each stratum, singular, and individuals within each, each stratum must have some traits in common. Now, strata is a Latin word. Um, it means layer. So, for example, uh, stratified um, rocks. If you look at sedimentary rocks, you can see the different strata as the horizontal layers as it works its way up. Or a uh, cake. Uh, if you look at a wedding cake, it's got different strata. So it has a lower layer, a middle layer, an upper layer, especially if it's very tasty. All right. So stratified samples when you have different layers and you're trying to get a bit from each of those layers. So you want to cut the cake down vertically and get some of every layer. All right, so let's look at an example. A researcher is interested in analyzing whether there are differences in Medicaid funding for the different U.S. census regions. So the 50 states plus the District of Columbia are separated by the census um, group into four different regions, the Northeast, the Midwest, the South, and the West. So we're going to generate a stratified random sample of two states from each of those census regions. All right. Now, the way we're going to do this is we want to get a random sample from each of the groups, but we know how to do random samples with our calculator. So we're going to grab the calculator, and you can do it on the old calculator or the new calculator. It doesn't really make any difference. You just need two random numbers from this group. So you need two from the 1 to 9 group, two from the 10 to 21 group, and so on. So I'll use the old calculator at first. I go to math, go to probability. I would tell it to pick me a random integer. You could technically use number five random integer. Um, it's just if you get a repeat, you'd have to do it again because you need there to be no repeat. I'm going to use number eight, and I'm going to say one comma nine, enter. And I really only need the first two, nine and eight, for Mont and Rhode Island. And then I would do it again, so math, probability, number eight, random integer, no repeat, and say ten comma, 21, and so on. Right? And then I would repeat that for the south region, and then I'd repeat it for the west region. And I'm always picking the first two numbers. Let me switch to the other calculator real quick. Right, here's the newer color calculator. If I press math, go to the probability menu, 8, random and repeat. Here I've got a lower, which is 1, an upper, which is 9, and n, which is 2, and press paste. So it comes out 1, 9, 2, and then I press enter, and there we have it. I have 8 and 9, right, Vermont and Rhode Island. And I realized just now I accidentally um, forgot to show the CE edition on the last calculator um, small random sampling value, but this is how you do it. Lower is 1, upper is 9, choose 2 in my case. And then I would do it again. And to make this easier, I'm going to go second, enter. That picks the entry, so it takes the last entry I had. And I can go in here with my arrow keys and just change these numbers to 10, comma, there's the comma button, and then 21, comma, 2. Close parentheses, enter. And there we have it. 12 and 14. And then I could do it again and again. So give me a second. I'll be right back with having done all of that. It just occurred to me I can show you. You actually don't have to do second entry to do it. You can actually just go up with your up arrow, highlight a previous entry, press enter on it. It'll bring it down. And then you can go in and type over the numbers. Or again, you could just go to random integer again and do it again. 39, comma, 51 because the District of Columbia is included. And there we have it. So I have my random sample. 
So I would have Rhode Island, Vermont, uh, Iowa, Michigan, um, 40 and 39 are way, or excuse me, 22 and 37. So Alabama and Washington, D.C., and 40 and 39 would be Alaska and Arizona. I'm going to go type that up. And there we have it. That's a stratified sample. I have some two from the northeast region, two from the midwest region, two from the south, and two from the west. So two, 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 and two. So I've gotten something from each of the four strata. All right, now let's look at a systematic sample. A systematic sample is the, um, the population is placed in an order. Um, there's a starting at, and starting at some random point, every kth individual is selected to be a member of the sample. The first individual selected corresponds to a random number between 1 and k. Okay, so this is kind of a complicated process. So what you do is you start off figuring out what your sample or even your population size is. Then you determine your sample size and then you compute capital N divided by little n and round down to the nearest integer. This is k. Then you randomly select a number between 1 and k. That number p um, is, is letter p. And then the sample will start at p and you're going to go p plus k, p plus 2k, and so on. It sounds more complicated than it actually is. So let's look at an example. We have a table on the next page that has the top 40 colleges and universities in the United States in 2017, according to the U.S. News and World Report. Obtain a systematic sample from this list of size n equals 7. Um, and notice I listed only in-state in tuition as opposed to both in-state and out-of-state tuition for places like the University of Michigan, for example. In-state is 13000 but out-of-state is like 40000 or something like that. Okay, so we have our list. We can see that the population size is capital N, which is 40. And I moved back a page to use the, the paper that we have right here, this blank page right here. So step one, I had 40. Step two, I already know that I want my sample size to be 7, so that's no problem right there. Uh, step three, let's see now. We wanted to compute capital N divided by little n and round down to the nearest integer. Well, 40 divided by 7 is 5.714. So we're going to round that down to 5. You have to round down, otherwise you could run out of real estate, essentially. You could have um, not gotten your sample of size 7 by the time you hit 40. So we're going to use k is capital N divided by little n, which was 5.714, and we round down to k equals 5. That's step 3. Then step 4 says we need to select a number between 1 and k. So we're going to choose a number between 1 and 5. So I'm going to make my calculator do that Oops, with the ye old random integer feature. So let's go to math, go to probability. Um, it doesn't matter, I can actually just choose a random integer. So I'm going to use number 5, just plain old random integer. I'm going to say I want my lower number to be 1, down here to my upper number which is 5, and I'm just going to choose one number. You can actually just leave it blank, that'll work too, or you can say 1 there, either way. Now, if you're on an old calculator, you just type rand int 1, 5. Simple as that. And press Enter. And the calculator chose number 3 for me. So P for me is 3. So let me go here. All right. Oop. Sorry, I got pasted too much. So now my sample, how it works is you start it number three, and then you add on your k values. So you say, okay, the first one's at three, the next one is three plus five, which is eight. Now add on five again. So if you will, this is your add on amount, which is k, right? So you're going to add on five every time for our example. And then this is your starting value. So you're going to start at number 3, and you're going to add on 5 every time. So I started at 3, I add on 5, that gets me 8. I add on 5 again, that gets me 13. I add on 5 again, that gets me 18, and so on and so on, until I hit 33, because 33 is the last. I now have 7 values chosen here.
So number three, number or number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have a sample of size seven. And if you want, you could list out those colleges. I'm not going to bother. I lied. I did bother. So I wrote them all out because technically this is the sample. Um, these are just the numbers that represent those. However, for our purposes in our class, most of the time, just writing out the numbers is fine. But as long as you understand that it refers to those particular colleges and universities. Technically, this last step is actually both 5 and 6 because you start and then you end at 33. That's the, the key with the last one is that you keep going until you have n in your sample. So we had to stop at 7. So this is really steps 5 and 6 down here. All right, we're done with the systematic sample. Now let's get to the cluster sample. So a cluster sample is when you have a population that is grouped into non-overlapping clusters. One of the clusters is randomly selected and all the individuals within that cluster are in the sample. So it sounds a little bit like a stratified sample to begin with, but it's quite different and we're going to talk about that in a second. But um, suffice to say you're getting everybody in that cluster. So let's go back to the Medicaid and the U.S. state regions example. So a researcher is interested in analyzing whether there are differences in Medicaid funding for the different U.S. regions and wants to construct a cluster sample by randomly selecting three clusters. So I've actually shown you here the divisions in the U.S. Um, each of those regions that we talked about in example one are actually subdivided into different divisions. So there's two divisions in the Northeast region, two in the Midwest, there's three in the South, which should not be surprising because the South was quite large, and there's two in the West region. So if you want to select a cluster sample, what you want is one of, or three, we want three clusters. So we want three of these divisions and we would select everybody in those divisions. So let me grab the calculator and again I'm going to do math I'm going to go to the probability menu. I'm going to choose a no repeat because I really don't want a repetition here. The first division is division 1. The last division is 9. And I'm going to choose a sample of size 3. Now remember, if you're on an old calculator, you can't do the n equals 3 portion. So you just have to do 1 comma 9 and then have it automatically um, write them all out. It'll write the 9 numbers scrambled and you choose the first 3. All right, so it chooses for me 8, 9, and 3. There, and I wrote down what that rand int no repeat looks like. If, now, if you're writing this on your own paper, you don't have to draw the little rectangle. But when it asks for a calculator entry on a problem, you would say rand int no repeat 1, 9, or rand int no repeat 1, 9, 3. Remember, if you have the old calculator, it's going to just look like a rand int no repeat it won't have the three part in it on the old calculators and technically you do this I believe with the new calculators and it'll just give you a list and you just choose the first three from that list so in this example it'll be five three and nine so when we did it we got eight nine and three so those three divisions are our clusters and we would sample every state all of the states from those three clusters